Okay, so um, now that you know, everybody was on the streets and, um, and the government is wondering, like, do these young people actually know what is in the bill? And do you interacting with the younger generation, had they read the bill, had they understood what they were coming to protest about? Yeah. Um, I think that that aspect of knowledge and understanding is something even the government initially tried to use at the beginning mm -hmm. to try and deter these protests. Mm -hmm. They 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 want to say that as young people we don't know or we don't understand what is going on. Like I'd mentioned earlier, before this uh, issue with the, the finance bill, I wasn't really engaged with the politics. But it's not. I'm not stupid. We went to school, we are educated and we are able, especially now with the information age and the internet, we are able to research and understand things. So I personally, I took time for myself to to research online and there's a chat GPT that was created specifically for the finance bill and that is what I used to understand the finance bill because when you check the PDF itself is like 130 something pages and most of it it's, it's in jargon that unless you've done law or some specific aspect of academia you don't really immediately understand it mm -hmm. and I believe that's what a lot of young people have done mm -hmm. and also it doesn't take except smartness to recognize when something wrong is being done, mm -hmm. when money is being used in excessive, mm -hmm. when um, offices that uh, have not previously been there, they're suddenly coming up and they are using all this amount of money instead of the money to being used for other things. There are people who took their time to create these infographs where they compare the amount of money that is spent or allocated for what we consider to be useless things and how they would have benefited the country had they been used to to uh, tackle more pressing issues. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't take somebody to be excessively smart or excessively learned and researched and um, uh, read with the constitution and everything to understand that the leaders have failed us. Mm -hmm. And that's at least that knowledge and that understanding and our moral values, that's something they cannot take away from yeah. us. Yeah. Right. So um, speaking of leaders, you know, um, just recently the president had a round table with a journalist and he commented on so many things that were talked about. I don't know which, there are so many things that have angered Kenyans. Yeah. So maybe in your perspective, which part of his you know response angered you the most start from there um he is so like he lacks empathy mm -hmm. complete like, not one single time since the initial the first person who died from this protest was rex mm -hmm. not one single time has he acknowledged mm -hmm. that Rex was a false killing from the police and offered sincere condolences to his friends and family. Mm -hmm. And now we have uh, up to 39 named, named and confirmed people who have died and even more assumed to be dead. Mm -hmm. And still the president did not offer any empathy towards their parents mm -hmm. and their families. Mm -hmm. And every time uh, I saw every time the journalists kept uh, like pushing him to answer what are his feelings towards such a situation and what he would say to the mother of so-and-so or to the family of, of so-and-so. He would just ca say one single statement or uh, like um, I, he kept saying, oh, it's bad, it shouldn't have happened, but two point two point something, two point four billion of property was destroyed and this was this was burnt and this was looted. So it seemed to him like uh, material mm -hmm. issues are more important than the lives of the people he's supposed to be protecting. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that he did not accept that the youth have recognized he's not somebody to be trusted. Mm -hmm. He was told outright like people have said you are a liar what is your response to that and he was like oh that is your statement not that, that that's not something he can relate to so he's in fact the word that uh, i think linus is was tone deaf he's very tone deaf he's he lacks empathy he does not care whatsoever and that's the most painful bit of it because when he was elected he was talking about bottoms up he was talking about a hustler's nation so a lot of people thought that this is actually the president who's going to make a difference for us mm -hmm. and 
if anything, Kenya is worse off than when he took office. Yeah. yeah. Right. So um, as a mother, I don't know what kind of emotion him talking about the young boy who passed away invoked in you. Well, um, to be honest, the, when because that was the f amongst the first question mm -hmm. that was asked on that specific interview. Mm -hmm. I switched off the TV at that point. I woke up the following morning and watched now the recording of it so that I can know the, how the rest of the conversation went. But it is... Um, he, he has children himself, and that's a point he kept on uh, referring to during the, the interview. But it, it, he was not talking to it uh, in the aspect of he actually feels for this family. And if that would have happened to his own kids, what kind of emotions or sadness he would be involved in. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, I think he did the interview to like try and... Um, recoup or try and like gain favor with the masses and it's it did even worse it was actually like adding fuel mm -hmm. to the fire mm -hmm. yeah okay so now there's an upcoming conversation on x so is that really what the gen z's want is that what millennials want well to be i saw the announcement one they've not even confirmed mm -hmm what date specifically and what time and if he was to show up at a twitter space and be involved in conversation i think it would be safer if he comes in as a guest and not as a host of the of the twitter space there are people who've been hosting the twitter spaces so i think it would be more ideal if they were the ones approached to invite him to try and speak to people but at, at, the, at the end of the day, Ruto is calling for conversation, mm -hmm. and there's no need of conversation at this time. Mm -hmm. He already knows what the people need. He already knows what it is that we demand from him. Mm -hmm. So what, what is the point of it all? Are they, it's like circling around bushes, mm -hmm. trying to, to try and erect other like, issues and agenda, but at the end of the day, he knows exactly what people want. Mm -hmm. What is it that people want? <laughs> we want him to step down. Uh -huh. Him and his government, the, especially the members of parliament and all, all those cabinet secretaries who won are not even qualified. Most of them are not qualified for the positions that they hold. They just step I concede that they have failed, they are not able to, to do the work that they are supposed to do mm -hmm. and allow Kenyans to like take a step into selecting other leaders who we, we think can take the nation where it needs to be. Yeah. So um, you talked about one of the things that you know is making Kenyans angry, you know, younger people, everybody in general, especially everybody who was at the protests. It is the mismanagement of funds and just allocating money in the wrong places. And he mentioned that, you know, he needs to borrow some more money. So what's your take on that? A whole trillion. Yeah. Um, from that specific interview, he, was, he said that Kenya has already reached the cap mm -hmm. of its debt and then he wants to borrow more money. Mm -hmm. So those two points don't align for me. And once you consider all these excesses that they have in government, mm -hmm. to be honest, if it was better managed, I don't think Kenya would be in a situation where we need to borrow more money in order to finance our government. Yeah. We, he is the one who said we have to live within our means. Mm -hmm. But then him and his cohorts, they are the same people who are coming up with extravagance and excesses. Like, why would you need one billion furniture? Mm -hmm. Do you know there's even somebody who was saying, like, it's as if Uhuru was living in an empty house. And even if he was living in an empty house, you don't need one billion mm -hmm. to furnish. So it's... Um, it's, he, he just has to concede, he has to concede to the, to the fact that we have seen they are misusing and they are mismanaging the country and we, we, we are not giving them any allowance anymore to like try and correct it because they've had enough time and they keep failing and failing us again and again.
So in the event that he steps down or somehow he is no longer in power, he's no longer the president of Kenya, like what kind of leadership would the young people want? And maybe you can, if you have an ideal person who you think would be fit for that position, maybe you can tell us. At, at this point in time, I haven't seen anybody who's expressed interest in that leadership, who is fit. Mm -hmm. So that, that's also something that makes me... Uh, what's the, I don't know the English word, Kusita. Because mm -hmm. yes, we want Ruto to go. Mm -hmm. And yes, we, are, we want all these other people to step down. Mm -hmm. But what after? We don't have an IABC. Mm -hmm. So we can't constitutionally recall MPs and run elections and uh, set up another whole set of government. Mm -hmm. And then if for whatever reason he does end up stepping down, who's supposed to take over? Mm -hmm. It's either Gashagwa. And Gashagwa is not even somebody, again, we can and see we can trust with our country or Wetangula, mm -hmm. uh, he's also somebody who's failed us or maybe Martha Kome. She recently bought a 30 million car. As a, as a judge of, the, uh, of, of Kenya, how, how do you acquire such amounts of money to be able to afford a 30 million car, new car paid off? So to be honest, it's, it's just... Um, I don't know. Some, some of these things, I, and I believe a lot of people are just taking it one day at a time because for now we don't even see anybody conceding and stepping out of office. So it's like pushing them, pushing them to the brink of them realizing that seriously, we don't want you guys here. We, we had better have some chaos for a bit, but then it is better off than what you guys are currently doing while in office. Yeah, yeah. right. So um, speaking of leadership, we have seen so many people coming out claiming that, you know, we are the leaders of Gen Z's, oh, nini, nini. And it's not one person. We have seen several people who are also politically affiliated to the president. So maybe you can give us your take on that. And are those the people that... Are there people that Gen Z's have elected to represent them anywhere? At this moment in time, I am not aware of any individual that has been selected by Gen Z and been told that we, you are the person we've elected as a leader. So these are just opportunists, mm -hmm. people who are just coming up, they've seen an opportunity and they want to see how they can initially, one, the main goal of these fools make money mm -hmm. out of it. and maybe gain popularity and clout and to be honest at this point everyone is being driven by whatever emotions they have within them whether it's rage whether it's frustration and there's no specific person who is like financing or pushing people to do things but there are individuals who like their 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 presence within this movement is very well notable and it speaks out for for itself for so for me somebody like hanifa if hanifa were to stand and say okay if it comes to leadership and there's this position i can go out and campaign to be elected to this position. Mm -hmm. That's somebody I can back up. Somebody like Boniface Mwangi, he, he is known like he's been there, he's been an activist for a long time. Yes, there, there's um, a few people who try and tarnish his persona and all that, but he's, he's come out as a person who can be trusted mm -hmm. by people. Mm -hmm. So somebody like him, why he, why he to step forth and say, okay, fine, I am willing to take leadership mm -hmm. if you allow me to. Those are people you can back up. Somebody like Ombachi, like people who've been vocal online and you can see their values are clear and they it's not shaky shaky you can't start doubting mm -hmm. yeah but as of this moment in time we are just all moving as one group of Ken kenyan youth trying to fight for a better country yeah, yeah. Right. so um as we wind up i don't know maybe you can give a message okay before we even wind up i don't know what's your take on this do you feel like the church has filled the young people because I remember there's a video I saw of you know clergymen our parents going to cleanse you know um, Molo's MP's house because people had touched it down yeah maybe you can give your take on that as well and people are saying that come 2027 we shall hide our parents IDs because maybe there are the people who might take us back to where we are right now yeah it's true you've actually mentioned two issues when it comes to our um, first the generation gen x and and the boomers, mm -hmm. our parents and our grandparents. Uh, to be honest, um, 
they, I wouldn't say they have actually failed our country. Mm -hmm. I think there are people who they did their best with what they were dealt with, mm -hmm. but now times have changed. The problem, it comes when they are not willing to accept times have changed. Their parents who are supporting their kids to come out with this movement, and those are the kind of parents we want. But then there are other parents who are behind their scene, they are, they are complaining, they are abusing their kids, like even stopping them, not because they think they are in harm's way, but because they think they are doing something, something wrong. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also good to... Uh, for the uh, for the older generations to try and understand and be open-minded mm -hmm. what is it exactly that the youth are fighting for mm -hmm. them they were threatened and they were scared and they were able to quiet their voice yeah. but we are not willing to quiet our voices you can scare us you can kill us clearly mm -hmm. you can abduct us mm -hmm. but we are still going to stand up for what we believe mm -hmm. is right mm -hmm. and then the uh, I've already forgotten the other issue <laughs> Hiding our parents' IDs. Uh, hiding our parents' ID. So yeah, so it's like if if your pa our parents, uh, grandparents are people you can communicate to mm -hmm. and convince them to see how important it is to move towards this direction, mm -hmm. then there's, there's no need of hiding their IDs. But okay, on now we are a changomo feature ID for sure, for sure. There's another issue. Oh, oh my God, the church has the church filled the young people. It it is the church. Mm -hmm. The church has badly failed people. In fact, if anything, because of the mandate of the church, you can, you can say they are just a step lower than the politicians. Because one, churches and uh, religion, they are not supposed to be politically affiliated. But now, most of the churches, you see, they, they, they have shown outright like they, are, they can be bought and they can be used to support or to like cleanse the face of a particular uh, politician or the current government, as we can see it now. Even the church, they haven't quite spoken up when people who are being killed, when people are being abducted, they haven't seen anything. And it's a disappointment when you try and put in comparison to what was happening in the initial Saba Saba movement. Mm -hmm. It is a church that was at the forefront of fighting for people's rights. Mm -hmm. But now, the leaders, you, like, they're not even hiding anymore. Uh, a deacon walks into state house empty-handed and they are coming out with a brown envelope. Mm -hmm. There's no Bible being carried in that brown envelope. We all know what's in, in that envelope. And it's quite disappointing, to be honest. And I know a lot of youth who right now would rather not even go to church. They will pray to their God in their own private spaces because they think even the altar has been, it's not, um, like, there is no that cleanliness of the, like it's not clean anymore. Akuna ile divinity of the sanctity of the church and the sanctuary and where people pray. So the church has been really disappointing. And I've I've seen uh, the uh, I forget his name, but there's a very active tweet who is active in getting the, these uh, clergymen's contacts and kuwasalimia. Me and Asema people continue, continue greeting these people because otherwise they, they can't be sitting there like enjoying their peace as if nothing is going on because that is what they are trying to do. Mm -hmm. But they have to recognize but it's time to change. So it's either you be on the right side or wangushwe na the wrong side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, one last one. Um, now that you say there's no one who is very rightful, Saikukwa, you know, the leader, do you think the protest happening right now should be happening? Because we are already done with the bill. Now it's Ruto must go. Okay, now you see people... Uh, a lot of people assume because Ruto said he has returned the finance bill to the to the parliament that it is that's not the end of it. One, the parliament is not in session, and they refused to go back to session because of this particular issue. So even those who are very much aware of what should be happening, constitu uh, like according to the constitution, they are not so sure whether the finance bill is actually fully rejected or. It is just there hanging in the air, waiting for people to forget, waiting for people to keep quiet, and then they bring it up. Some
something else, there's the appropriations bill mm -hmm. that is now being used instead of the finance bill. Mm -hmm. It's not any better. Mm -hmm. Teachers are not being paid, but MPs, their salaries are being increased. We still have medical interns and doctors who are not employed. They've not been posted to any hospitals, but we have the, they are still allocating money for the office of the first lady and the second lady and the wife of the speaker. These are not people that we elected. Offices of the CAS, these are not, they are not even constitutionally correct, but according to the appropriation pointing of these uh, secret secretaries. So in theory, the finance bill has been rejected, by, has been sent back to parliament, not rejected, has been sent back to parliament, but we still don't have a tangible uh, action plan to show that yes, the finance bill has been rejected mm -hmm. and as a country we are moving towards this direction. Mm -hmm. So the protests still have to continue happening. Uh -huh. yes. okay. So as the protests happen, we, I was walking in town today and so many businesses have been closed. Mm -hmm. So what can we do to make sure that businesses are still running so that Isque Sisiwa Kenya and Naomiya end, you know, as they stay safe? To be honest, I feel that this is a time of, for a revolution mm. and no revolution happens without any sacrifice mm. or any loss. If we continue with the normal status quo as if everything is okay, we are heading towards a bad direction. Mm. If we protest and we close down businesses and we, we keep uh, uh, going, whatever, now they are calling it an anarchy, we are heading towards an anarchy, we head towards direction but with the purpose of cleansing our government, cleansing our leadership and the foundations on which, the corrupt foundation on which our country is built on. It's going to be chaotic for a while, but the direction at the end, at the far, far, far end of the tunnel is going to be better than if we sit back and pretend like nothing bad is happening. So sacrifices are going to be made. Mm -hmm. These guys who've lost their life and sincere condolences to their families and their friends, they are, they are our heroes. Our, they are people who they have, they, they have died, they have bled for our country. So if this movement continues and the revolution does happen, they are going to go in the history books as the people who sacrificed their lives for the betterment of our country. Yeah. Yeah. Any final re remarks? Uh, final remarks, Zakayoshuka. <laughs> Like, no, but seriously, these guys, you know, sometimes you sit back and you wonder, do they, do they actually have a conscience? Like, it, it reaches a point, it's so much brutality, so much hostility, so much negative things, you wonder whether these people have a conscience. Mm. So I just pray, whatever, even the tiniest atom of consciousness that might still be there, I just hope our, lead, our elected members of parliaments, our governors, our CSAs, and the president himself and his administration just try and tap into that tiny atom of consciousness that's mm -hmm. left and consider, is this actually how you want Kenya to be? Or you are also, as the Gen Zs, you want Kenya to be better? And how can we move towards a better country? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know if you can hear the tear gas yeah. blasting over and there was an order that you know that should be no tear gassing people who are protesting the court submitted the order and then the president himself say said in the interview that the police are not going to but that cements he's a what mm -hmm. he's a liar yeah, we can we can actually hear the tear gas from where we are and yeah it's gonna get bad you can actually see the situation but anyway anyway shakira thank you so much for your time yeah. and for your remarks and keep championing for the rights of you know yeah. we move we move together mm -hmm. so long as uh, I think it was in enemy of the people or one of the set books we had in high school mm -hmm. it's a people united they can never be defeated so that that is actually something that keeps motivating me if even if I, I, I reach a point like I do are we really going anywhere or are we really doing something and then I remember we are united as a nation as a young people of Kenya and it gives me hope that we are going to conquer at the end of it all okay. yeah. thank you all right, guys, so you've heard from Shakira. Keep it KOM for more updates about what Gen Z's want.